I'm Chris Merrill. He is Joe Huizinga as we continue our Immigration Week with 48 Hours on the Border. 48 Hours on the Border. A special on immigration on the Chris and Joe Show. So as you know, we've had a number of our reporters, our staff, that went to the Arizona border in conjunction with uh, ABC 15 and Scripps News and did the series on what it's like living along the border, whether you're working in uh, the industry of, of border protection, whether you are part of the, the, the service groups that are helping those who are coming across the border, whether you just live there, maybe ranchers and things like that. Uh, one of those reporters that went to the border is Heidi Hummel. She is our uh, KTAR news reporter. And uh, Heidi, she joins us in the studio right now. Heidi, you go down there and where's the first place you went and why did you choose that as the first place? Well, the first place we went, we had an interview with Cochise County Supervisor Ann English. So that was a scheduled interview, so we were on time. And we really just wanted to get her take as a, a local official. She's lived on a ranch five miles north of Douglas for the last nearly 60 years. So she has a good understanding of what's been going on and how the border situation has developed over the last decades and more so since Title 42 ended in May. How does she feel that? I mean, what has she talked about as far as the changes that have gone on? I mean, six decades along the border, she's seen a lot. She has seen a lot. And so right now, the border situation, she's very empathetic towards the migrants. She wants to help them. She's also in charge of the budget because she's on the Co Cochise County Board of Supervisors, so she's worried about money. Um, but she also understands, you know, Douglas is a very small town. It's rural America. And she said that the community in Douglas is growing frustrated with migrants being processed in Douglas and then bused uh, north to Tucson or Phoenix. So if she's frustrated, what does she want to see happen then? She, well, she has a different sentiment than the people who are frustrated. She's frustrated on a political level. So she told me she was disappointed that the bipartisan U.S. Senate bill, you know, didn't pass. And she needs more dollars. You know, she really is worried about that budget. And, and she also said it, it shouldn't be a state issue. Immigration is a federal process. So why is it the local counties who are having to shell out dollars from their budgets? So when you talk about the funding, then, is she hoping to get more federal funding? Is she hoping that something passes that allows some freedom in the budget for whether it's the Board of Supervisors or specific services to get a little bit of the federal dollars? So right now it's both. There are dollars coming in from the federal government and the state government. Um, the bus program that takes the migrants from Douglas to Tucson or Phoenix, that's state funded through DEMA. Okay. And now the where the migrants are dropped off when they get to Tucson, uh, some of them go to Casa Alitas, and that receives federal funding. And so I also interviewed the executive director of Casa Alitas, Diego Pina Lopez, and he told me that federal funding runs out on April 1st, and that's in two and a half weeks. And when federal funding runs out on April 1st, the migrants will no longer, Border Patrol will no longer bring the migrants to Casa Alitas. They're going to drop them, he thinks, somewhere around the Greyhound bus station. It's not clear yet. Talking with our reporter, Heidi Hommel, she went down to Douglas, part of uh, the series we're working with, ABC 15, in conjunction on 48 Hours on the Border. So you met up with Diego Pina Lopez, and he is with Casa Elitas, which is a uh, homeless shelter down in Tucson? It's it's a migrant shelter, not homeless shelter. So Border border Patrol is the one who brings the migrants to Casa Elitas. So once, they're, once the migrants come across the border illegally near Douglas, they surrender to Border Patrol. Then Border Patrol brings them into Douglas so they can be processed. Then you get an asylum hearing. From there, you go to, and you know, your asylum hearing, it's not going to be for months, maybe years. So from there, you're bused to Tucson. And if you do stay at Casa Elitas, um, They'll get, he says they only stay for about 6 to 48 hours, but they give you food, medical attention if you need it. Some of, He says most of them are healthy, but he's also seen some, uh, you know, other crazy things. He said when he first started Casa Alitas, a woman, a migrant mom with a five-year-old and a two-week-old baby arrived there, and she had an infected C-section scar. So he had to figure oh my out gosh. how to, yeah, and he was the one who was giving her medical attention. So Casa Alitas has grown since then, but, you know, they don't stay there long, and then they continue you on to a sponsor somewhere else in the United States where they wait for that asylum hearing. Paint, paint a picture for me. Who is, you keep saying migrants. What is a migrant? Anyone coming over the southern border 
into the United States, and they're not all from Mexico. You know, it's our border with Mexico. Is but it mostly people from South America, Mexico? According to Diego, yes. He said Mexico, Venezuela, Haiti, Cuba, but also, have you ever heard of the African country of Mauritania? Yeah, it's very small, actually, yes. Uh, in fact, I believe it's on the, here, I'm going to turn geeky on you, on the western coast of uh, Africa, and they've had some recent unrest in the last year or so. They were actually the last country to end slavery. And oh, I did not know that. They didn't. Cr slavery was criminalized in Mauritania in 2007. So he's has said he's talked to migrants who were former slaves, and he said never in a million years did he think he'd be sitting across from someone telling him that they're a former slave wow. in 2024. Holy cow. So how do they get from Mauritania, which is a beautiful river that runs into the ocean, Joe? Mm -hmm. Surprising that this is in the back of my mind, isn't it? You didn't know I knew this about Mauritania. This does not surprise me at all that you did know this, though. So from there, how do they get to Mexico to try to cross the US, into the U.S. border? I don't know. We didn't talk about that, but... I do imagine they somehow get to Mexico and then make their way north to the border. Okay. Heidi Hommel is with us. She's our KTAR news reporter who uh, was at the border as part of our 48 Hours in the Border series that we're doing in conjunction with ABC 15. So, uh, Diego Peña Lopez from this, is it a nonprofit? The uh, migrant the, shelter? I, I believe Sh so. The shelter? Okay. So, they run out of funding here at the end of this month. Is that what you said? Yes. April 1st. Okay. They run out of funding. We don't know exactly what happens, but maybe CBP drops people off at a Greyhound station? Because that's what they were doing before they started Casa Alitas. That's how Casa Alitas came to be, is that Border Patrol was just dropping the migrants off at the Greyhound bus station in Tucson, because that's why they need to take the migrants away from Douglas. You and English said they you, they need to go to a transportation hub like Tucson or Phoenix, something with an airport or a bus station, so they can get to a sponsor. So also, Casa Alitas only takes. He said 99% of the migrants that he helps have sponsors somewhere else in the United States. What that, does that mean? What is a sponsor? Sponsor is someone who will vouch for you. Basically, you're going to stay with them. You know, you can even you you can get a work permit, but you can't. So it doesn't have to be family. It doesn't have to be family, but basically, someone to vouch for you that you. Will will show up at this asylum hearing when it comes up are there, in the meantime. Are there any consequences for them if they if the person doesn't show up? In other words, it sounds to me like it's the equivalent of a co-signer on a loan. Yeah, and, well, I don't know what the consequences would be for the sponsor, but... Okay, well, we're going to deport them if the, if the person doesn't show up. What do you say about that, huh? If Joe sponsors somebody and that person doesn't show up at their asylum hearing, Joe's out of here. What do you think about that solution? I think... I don't know what I think about that. Yeah, but the, that's a reporter answer. As, I don't like it. But if if these migrants don't show up at their asylum hearings, they will be deported. If you can find them, but they're obviously they're not at the, the asylum hearings. Well, they, if they want asylum, you have to show up at this hearing. But Ann English said that most of them aren't eligible for asylum, yeah. so they will be deported in a few years. Again, if we can find them after they don't show up, right? But is, is there a bounty hunter program for people that don't show up to their asylum hearing? And I don't know... I, I don't know, and I don't know. I think if if they actually want asylum, and Diego was the one who told me this, a lot of them want to do it the legal way. They, I'm sure they They do. ask him, what are the next steps? Yeah. And it, it breaks his heart when he has to say, you just got to hang tight. Hang tight yeah. until you're hearing. And, you know, but they really do want citizenship and to live here and build lives here. So between Ann English and Diego Pina Lopez, who you talked to, what solutions did they outline for you? Or, or what solutions did you see from what they told you in terms of making the process better, making things better for, for you and I here in Phoenix? Well, it's that funding, you know, like the Douglas community is worried about what if the buses stop coming, which is a reality that could happen. Yeah. So more funding for the buses and, and more funding for Casa Elitis, but that feels like a Band-Aid. I, I don't know what the, what the real solution is to fix the immigration system. And that funding comes from... The bus program is state-funded. Casa Alitas receives federal funding. Okay. So right now, the border will take all the dollars it can get. If Casa Alitas doesn't get the federal funding that you're talking about running out at the end of the month, and you've got migrants that are being dropped off at bus stations, don't we run the risk of creating what is effectively a zone around bus stations? Yeah, so those would be called... Um, street releases okay. and so Diego said that they haven't done that in Tucson in a really long time so he was concerned about if this would actually happen but also the sentiment I got from him was that he thinks that funding's going to come through 
Oh, okay. Or he's hoping. He's optimistic. Political chicken is being played. All right. That's what it sounds like. Heidi, great job. Heidi Hommel, our KTA, our news reporter. She was at the border as part of our 48 Hours in the Border series. Thanks for watching the Chris and Joe Show. Click to see more from Chris and Joe and tap the button in the middle to subscribe to KTAR News.